Hey everyone, if you're looking for a solid way to mount a Garmin head unit or a smartphone to your bike with no special phone cases required, then the Bone Bike Tie Connect System is a really interesting product that you might consider. In this video, check out this new product from the Taiwanese company Bone and find out why this unique phone and head unit mount is one of the most versatile and secure mounting options on the market and that includes the very popular quad lock mounting system. If you like to monitor your cycling metrics or use a navigation device while cycling, then you're probably familiar with the two primary options. It's likely that you either use a dedicated bike specific head unit like a Garmin, or you use your smartphone running an app and mount it to your bike. Personally, I use a Garmin Edge unit on both my gravel and mountain bike, but I also sometimes like to use a smartphone when cruising around town with the family. Now before Bone introduced me to their system, it hadn't actually occurred to me that a single product could solve the issue of mounting both types of devices on multiple bikes quickly and securely without any tools. It really solves a problem that I didn't even know I had, but I've been pretty into this product for a few weeks now. Now the Bone system is really nice in that the base natively accepts a Garmin mount right out of the box. The tough rubberized base mounts to the stem or handlebars like a wristwatch, and the semi-rigid mounting plate fits any Garmin head unit, like the Edge 510 here that I've been using for years. Another useful feature is that it incorporates a 45 degree entry and exit angle, unlike the typical 90 degree entry angle for most cycling head unit mounts. What this means is that starting from the 45 degree entry point, you can rotate it 45 degrees in either direction, which allows you to mount your device horizontally or vertically. In either direction, you'll know it's locked into place by the satisfying click. Now this may seem trivial, but it's one of the only mounting systems I know of that uses the 45 degree lock, and it allows you to mount your device either on the handlebar or on the stem, and have the device oriented the way you like it. Now for a smartphone, the system comes with a rubberized mounting plate that's semi-rigid at the mounting interface, but uses elastic bands to hold the phone in place. The bands are well placed and well designed, and can fit phones from 4.7 to 7.2 inches. For my iPhone X, the bands don't interfere with either camera on the front or the back. Face ID isn't obstructed, and the bands don't hinder any of the normal swiping gestures I typically use. On the back of the mount is a Garmin locking interface, which also means, as an added bonus, you can actually use your existing Garmin mounts with a smartphone if you wanted to. Now another benefit of the 45 degree lock design is that if you do use a smartphone for navigation, sometimes it actually makes more sense to have your phone mounted in landscape orientation, which is as simple as rotating the phone by 90 degrees. Also, and this is pretty obvious, but with this system you can actually remove the phone and use it as you normally would, leaving the base mounted to the bike. This is in contrast to many other bike phone mount systems, which are all one unit and require unstrapping or unclamping the phone in order to use it. Now at first I was kind of opposed to trying a mounting system that used a rubber band to hold the device in place, but it's actually a very secure mount, which I'll show you in just a minute. But there's actually one unique benefit that a rigid round clamp doesn't have. On both my bikes, the handlebars actually don't have a traditional round profile, except right near the stem clamping area. The elastic band mount allows me to mount my devices basically anywhere on the bar I want, which simply isn't possible with a rigid round clamp. I also like that if the cockpit area is crowded by handlebar bags and stem caddies, you could even mount your device to the top tube of your frame, since the band is long enough to accommodate up to a 47mm diameter bar. It's just a really flexible system that's super versatile, and basically a one-stop solution to all your device mounting needs. But of course, the big question, does it actually hold your device in place? And not just when cruising around on a flat street, but when you're really sending it through some rough terrain. So I've got the bone mount on my Santa Cruz high tower here, and I'm hitting a couple of the gnarlier sections of my local mountain bike loop. Also, I attached my older iPhone 5 to it, since it's bigger and heavier than the Garmin unit, so it's a better test of holding strength. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed at how well the bone system holds everything together. Now you definitely see some motion, but I actually think that's by design, as the rubberized base and the elastic bands absorb some of the shock. Now even though the phone is moving, the base is very securely mounted to the bike, and there's no need to readjust the mount after a chunkier section of trail. In fact, through these sections of trail, the GoPro handlebar mount actually kept rotating, but the bone mount never moved. I should also mention that my last Garmin mount for my mountain bike actually broke because it was a rigid mount and when I fell, the Garmin hit the ground and immediately snapped the rigid plastic mount into pieces. Now, I haven't actually tested this theory, but I would guess that this mount might survive a fall like that simply due to its elasticity. 
So I mentioned at the top that this might be a better alternative than even the super popular quad lock phone mount. Now, while the quad lock mount is really nice, it also suffers from the typical limitation of round bars only. It can't mount to an arrow shaped bar like the bone can. Also, in order to use a quad lock system, you need a dedicated phone case for your device, which of course costs extra. And if they don't make a case for your particular phone, then you simply can't use the system. Now, like the bone mount, the quad lock system does incorporate the 45 degree entry angle, which allows portrait and landscape mounting. However, as a whole, I'd say the bone system is a really great alternative to the quad lock, especially since by the time you choose the mount and the case option, the quad lock system will cost about four times as much as the bone. Now, the quad lock may look a bit sleeker due to the integrated case, but it also can't accept a Garmin unit natively. So if you like to use both a head unit and a phone, depending on the situation, you'd need two different mounting options. Now, we'd say the only potential downside to the bone system would simply be the aesthetic. Now, it's certainly not as bulky as the other elastic banded mounting options I've seen, but you still do have the bands that cross the four corners of your device, and if you don't like the look of that, then perhaps it's a non-starter. I'd say overall, though, Bone did a really good job of keeping the form factor pretty sleek, while incorporating a ton of utility into the design. Now, I've been using this on both my bikes, and switching back and forth is super simple, and it's much easier than transferring my bolt-on out front Garmin mount between bikes every time I want to switch. It's also nice to be able to click my phone onto the bike when we go out as a family to the park, and I want to offload my pockets and have quick access to the phone if I want to snap a picture or something. Now, I'd say overall, for the money, it's a great product to add to your collection of cycling accessories, and I think if you have multiple bikes and multiple devices you like to use, then it certainly adds a lot of value. All right, well, that's going to do it for this one. If you do decide to give the bone mount a try, buying it through the Amazon link below helps me out by earning me a small commission on each purchase made. I also want to give bone a big thanks for reaching out to me and giving this small YouTube channel a chance to represent the average cyclist. As always, thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.